Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and install Windows 3.1 on our little uh, generic 486 in PCEM. So I've booted up the machine and now I'm going to go ahead and change drive A. We're going to point it at Windows 3.1 Disk 1 <coughs> Pardon me. Um, something I didn't mention in the previous video, I actually have legitimate licenses for all of the software that I'm using here. Um, I would encourage everyone else to do the same thing. Um, I do not condone software piracy whatsoever. Um, so yeah, you can find, uh, legitimate copies of this stuff on eBay or various other places. So that being said, let's go ahead and run the, uh, Windows 3.1 setup here. Okay. Set up Windows now, press enter. I'm going to do custom setup. It can go on the default C colon backslash Windows. That looks good. VGA. Yep. Now, if I recall, it's going to copy some files in this text mode. <laughs> from disk 1 and disk 2 and then then it'll switch it'll actually launch windows and do the rest of the setup from disks 3 to 6 from there okay now this is going a little quicker than I was expecting it's always good let's hope we don't get a crash like last time You know, once we get to disk 3, we were getting that uh, hard fault in the MS-DOS extender message and a stack dump and register contents, and it's pretty nasty. Okay, so far so good. Go ahead and capture the mouse. We're not going to set up printers. Go ahead and install everything. We have space for it. It's pretty crazy that Windows 3.1 only took like 3 megabytes on the hard drive for a full install. Okay, yeah. I guess 52 megs will be okay. For the permanent swap file. Now moment of truth this is where we had the crash last time it would get through various numbers of these files and then bomb out Windows 3.1 dropped real mode support, so you needed at least a 286 processor to run it, uh, whereas Windows 3.0 could run on a 8088 in real mode. Which is probably something we'll do on the channel, set up a Windows 3.0 on... 8088 type thing just so people can see it it's a painful experience to use but it does work even on CGA video cards although on a CGA you get 640 by 200 uh, monochrome graphics so it's pretty rough looking 
And I don't believe the the uh, VGA drivers will work in real mode. At least I seem to remember something like that. This is going really quick. I'm surprised. This may be a very short video, at least by my standards. Although after Windows itself is set up, I'm going to go in there and uh, enable sound. This is the final disk. Wow. Look at that. And we'll go ahead and add these to Windows. Skip the tutorial. Eject the disk. And reboot. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. All right. First thing I'm actually going to do is go ahead and set up the uh, MS-DOS utilities group here and program manager. Uh, Let's see, new program group, call it MS-DOS 6.22 tools, c colon backslash dos backslash wntools.grp. I don't know why it doesn't do this manually, but or automatically, but that gives us antivirus backup and undelete right from within Windows. It's pretty nice. But the next thing I'm going to do, I set this up as a Sound Blaster 1.0. So I'm going to go to Control Panel, Drivers, Add, Creative Lab Sound Blaster 1.0. Then that was disk three that it wants. Okay, let's see. I think we need to find out what the default settings are. One point oh jumper settings. I think it's 220 interrupt 7. Yep, and now we have sound. 
and we can go to accessories, media player, see if canyon.mid works. Okay. Main. Control panel. Media mapper. Let's do general MIDI. Oh, we may not have MIDI. Yeah, we may have to change that to Sound Blaster 1.5 to get MIDI. I'm not sure why that's not working. Anyhow, I think we're all done. Next time, I think what we'll try to do is get some flavor of OS2 going on VM here. Maybe 2.1, maybe 3.0. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Anyhow, thanks for watching.